no, no. Bump, bump, bump a road. started this YouTube channel I kind of felt that it's been my job to test out equipment when I was first getting started out my dad and I we didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out and basically what that meant was we were dirt floor poor and every decision we made every piece of equipment we bought was a make or break if that piece of equipment worked good then we got to eat and maybe buy another piece of equipment. But if that piece of equipment didn't work the way we thought it was going to work, it could have financially ruined us. And so when I do these reviews, I don't like to tell you guys if a piece of equipment is good, bad, or in between, because what may be good for me may not be good for you. Instead, what I try to do is I try to show the piece of equipment doing what it's meant to do, and then I try to take it a step further and to see how much abuse can it take because if it can handle the kind of abuse that I throw at it inside of a video, hopefully it will hold up to the kind of abuse that you guys will be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And so with that being said, we're gonna go out to CMP Attachments and test out a new power rake. I do own a power rake and it's a good power rake, but it may not be good for all of you. So I wanna look at other options to see if there may be something else that's good for you guys. So we're gonna take off right now. We're gonna go hook it up to this, and then we're gonna bring it 100 miles north and torture it on the absolute worst gravel road that I've ever seen. This, I actually had to talk to the neighbors and tell them to please not fix it. This is bad, which means this video is gonna be a lot of fun. It is. Let's go. Let's go to CMP now. Let's go hook it up and get it rocking and rolling. made it ah, it looks busy in the shop we must be outfitting that deer with the hydra wrap i'm gonna guess Ooh, could that be the one could that be the one hydra rake i think that's the one i'm gonna be pulling home today let's go find out how you doing, Derek? Good. How are you doing? Yeah, she doesn't have a 14 pen. I know. I was looking for a cigarette lighter because we got this nice universal box that plugs into a cigarette lighter. Right? I don't even see that in there. Huh? No. Do, Do we? Mind if I go in it? No. Go right ahead. I don't care. I find it hard to believe they don't put a cigarette lighter. No, out your head because that door has to click to. I've never seen that before. Huh? Yeah, there's no power source, is there? I feel like they've gotten they got the buttons for they got the buttons all in it too um for the oh here it is oh boom so let's go look at this power rake derek i want i want you to kind of walk me through it and then um that way you can walk these guys through it sure so they know what they're looking at because you know, like I said this morning, I've got a power rake, but I want to give these guys options. One thing that I like about our rake versus anybody else's, mm -hmm. um, Stan, we put our bearing inside the drum. Okay. So if you look here, everybody else just puts like a four, uh, four bolt pillow block bearing on, like an agriculture bearing. Yeah. But what's that running in all day long? The dirt. Right. So you got to... You got to worry about that dirt taking the seal out. Mm -hmm. Basically, when that bearing goes out, what they tend to do is on this side, on direct drives, they use the hydraulic motor as their bearing. When that bearing goes out and you don't catch it right away, what does it do? It takes the bearing out of the hydraulic motor as well. Oh. So what we do is we have a bearing there 
And we have a bearing on this side to put in the drum. Okay. So all our hydraulic motor ever does is spin the drum. It never relies on that hydraulic motor to be the bearing. So there's actually a band of metal on the inside of this drum welded in that keeps the dirt out. Okay. And then two fabric seals. What we do with this is we break it in. Because we've had problems when we weld this teeth on, this metal band, it fits tight into the drum. So when, when you, you first it run out? it, yeah. yes, when you first <laughs> run it, this will actually get hot. And we normally have to break them in. Um, and a lot of it's, we can't figure out a better way if I take the metal band out. We could eliminate breaking it in and getting this hot, but that's what keeps the dirt out. That's what I usually pull these pins out, Stan. I don't like these pins. Um, this right now makes it in solid mode. This one here, what it does, it locks it like a road grader. So when you have this pin in, this quick attach will not articulate this way for float. I love, I, you're probably going to take these out and never use them. Okay. The reason why, <laughs> some guys like it, like if you're trying to make a real level yard. Okay. The pins help you because it's like you put it down, you just drive around. I like to, rather than lifting my booms up and down, now you can just tip forward and back a little and you can fine tune your depth without moving your loader bucket. And let's say you come to a hill and mm -hmm. you want it to come up. When you pull this pin out, it'll let the front wheels go up and I'll let it go down. And since it, I'm gonna want those pins in because the what I'm gonna go grade is just a hard pack. I mean, this is hard pack stuff and it's all one level, so I'm good with leaving that pin in for what my, this applic today's application. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this here, what happens is, what this normally is, is your air brake, your caliper, uh -huh. on your semi is here. This here is a cam that goes out to your brake pads and it goes that callip, that air brake. Yep, yep. And this yep. is your slack adjuster. Right to, there. To get it so you only have what what is it, two inches of travel is legal yep. for DOT or something? Yep. So that's what this is. They took a slack adjuster. This is where your callip um, your different chambers would hook up of your air brakes off of a trailer clever yeah it is so they clever took a product that's already made but they make this custom but yeah i could see it being it's a ticket did you find one we got her bazinga the universal the universal there we go okay so i want to show these guys what it looks like boom so we will have power angle with this now i would recommend pulling trying it with the pins and without i'm gonna yeah, I would recommend that. Are you uh, tell me you don't think I would actually try that both ways? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like Stan's probably going to try some stuff that he should have. <laughs> yeah. With the power rake loaded up and ready to go, next step is to bring it up to where the gravel road is. Now this is a minimal maintenance road that's really never had a good thorough regrade done on it since it was first built over a hundred plus years ago. We've used a chain link fence a few different times to smooth it out, but never done a very thorough job. With this road being driven on daily and hard packed as it is and never really serviced or loosened up, I'm worried that this power rake might not have enough power to really rake it out.
Everything is loose. This ain't done. Stage two. We slap on a bucket and we go all the way through. Thing made short work of that. That is hard packed crap. Oh, like it. Me likey. faster than I thought it would and this is cutting a lot better than I thought it would but now we're gonna get into the worst part right here of the entire road this is where it gets bad so let's make this let's see how this happens down no, no. bump 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 a road you can't get a better song to Great a gravel road to then bumpy road by Big Snow.
So I'm guessing a few of you may have seen other grading videos before. Some of those grading videos are super popular. But there's something that I don't know if is actually being said in any of those other grading videos. But what you just seen how we graded this out here, section by section by section, is not how we actually work. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you if there were no cameras running, how I grade this out. And the reason I say that is because I wouldn't do it a section at a time. I don't want to grade this section and then grade this section and then have this weird between sections. I would take it from the start and go down, back, down, back, and I would keep blending everything until this entire road was buttery smooth. And that's what I'm gonna do now. And the only way to show you how that looks is if I pop you all the way up on the top, we go into hyper mode, we put on some music and we kick, we kick back and we just get to work. Let's do that. And this is how we'll really great. The first step is I'm gonna use this to get everything the same. Okay, so we're gonna actually start from here, go all the way down, all the way back so we get everything to flow. During this step of the grading, what I'm focusing on is getting everything to just flow and blend together. But I can't leave it like this because it's too soft. As soon as we get a rainstorm or something like that, I'm going to end up with holes in the road again. So there's a couple more critical steps that still have to be done before I consider this job finalized. I figured I had five hours into this project and right now I'm about an hour and 20 minutes into it. Now let's just see how she looks. I could, I feel like right now I could just walk away and say she's done. It's that smooth. She just flows. Yeah, Lee, look at that. I love it when a plan comes together. All right, but let's smooth top it now. Let's go grab a bucket and let's get her really dialed in nice. When I was at CMP, Derek said something that was kind of funny. He's like, you know, that Kubota, that kind of reminds me of my old Bobcat T190. I'm like, well, I have a T180, and there it is. Do you see any similarities? Hmm. Hmm. I 
mean, even the littlest details, like how the arms come down. Not just the overall shape, but... Look at that. You guys see it at all? I mean, that's a smaller unit than a T190. It's the next size down, but... Hmm. There may be something to what he said. All right, but that doesn't doesn't do anything with our job. Four and ones on. I don't need a four and one for grading, but I actually don't use a four and one for anything. To be quite honest with you, we've had this bucket and we've got less hours on this bucket than anything. And everybody in Europe, all you Europeans, you're like, oh my god, how do you work without a four and one? It's pretty cool that you guys. We're so different, but we still do the same damn thing, except I got that horse fly. Did I get that horse? I got it. Did you guys see that? Mm, popping horse flies. Nothing better than pop. No animals were harmed in the making of this video except horse flies. The Hydra Rake did a much better job of loosening the soil than I ever thought it would. In fact, now I've got to recompact it. That's where the bucket comes in place. And you'll see me going bass backwards on this and I'll explain why I'm doing that. But part of what I'm doing right now is firming the soil back up. So let me slow this down and explain exactly how I'm grading this thing. I'm grading with the front end and I'm not using the flow and I'm going backwards because it's just allowing me to feather grow I could go the other way but there's all of the soil that I want is where it needs to be right now and all I want to do is just smooth it out so I'm going to use a combination of forward backward the back part of the bucket the front part of the bucket but you'll be seeing me using different parts of the bucket in different ways that's because at different parts of the road I may need to feather in just a touch more or take away a little bit so that's what I'll be adjusting as I go So at this point, I'm recompacting the soil, making sure that everything flows and blends and is very tight, but it's unfortunately not very pretty. I used to have a section of, well, I used to have a gate, a section of fencing, and it basically was just nothing more than a kind of a big gate. And I turned that into a drag, it worked phenomenal. If I knew where it was. All right. I don't see it anywhere. Let's go over to the farm. See if maybe it got used there. And left. Yeah. Ah, we're just going to head over there.
This is smooth. Oh, that wind feels so good. Oh, that breeze. I had the air conditioner going on in there, but still. Well, we don't necessarily need a gate. Oh, there we go. There's one right there. All right. Perfect drag. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. That's plenty of room. Oh, look who shows up. We've already done all of the grading. All we're doing now is polishing. Throw a big rock on here and boy, she'd really do good. probably find a big rock somewhere along the way, right? all this work. What the heck are you guys doing in the dirt? The job is over here. There ain't nothing heavy enough in here. But I do know where there are some we can use. So let's go and grab some right now and toss them on and see how that works. All right, I shortened up the chain. Threw a couple pieces of ballast on there. Now let's see how she rolls.
know some of you guys are like, well, Dirt Monkey, aren't you undoing the compaction stuff? No, I'm not. This is just a polish. It just eliminates the rot. If there's any slight imperfections or unevenness, this just gets rid of it. And it's not gonna hurt nothing. women's prison with a four-wheeler and a fence gate just like that we were responsible for doing the whole dig on the prison and at the end they wanted to finish grade and I didn't really have a land plane I didn't have a power rake and they wanted it perfect so I brought out my four-wheeler and I brought out a fence and I just went around and started grading it they couldn't believe it they were like oh it'll never work a couple hours later Nice. Traffic jam. Traffic jam. Looks like he's turning. I got my fence there. All right. Like we got more company on the road. Holy crap, it's a busy day on this road. I wonder what they think of the new road. Nice driveway. You like it? Beautiful. Awesome. I, don't, I wonder how that happened. No, you didn't feel like you're going through I the dunes. Didn't, I didn't feel like mobile. Yeah. It's Oh, she's got a truck full of Irish wolfhounds. <laughs> oh. What do you guys think? I think we wrap this video up. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the ride today. Pretty fun for me. Let me know what you think of videos like this. If you like them, I'll make more of them. I hope you guys had fun, and I hope to catch you on another one. Hey, if you guys enjoy these videos, if you can hit that like button, that goes a long way. God bless you guys. We'll see you on another one. I think I'll just be here for the next four or five hours doing this. Because if you could, would you? Like, yeah. Stuff like this is fun. Watch out, baby. I think this is the last pass right here. No tracks. Everything's blended together, hard packed, and then just a nice top, just a nice skim coat over it to polish it up. To just make her beautiful. Look at that, you guys. <laughs> there we go. Now there is one thing wrong with this entire road. It's missing a vital component. And that's this stuff, top dressing. So this was not my road. I don't own it. So I can't really bring in top dressing and do it the way that I would love to see it officially done. But it is important to point out that if you guys are regrading a road, I would highly recommend you do this last step because this last step is what creates a lasting effect. And what, what I'm actually talking about is just by regrading it, I'm doing okay, but I'm not fixing it permanently. 
I need to crown that road. I need to create, now this is exaggerated, but I need to create a crown, a peak in the middle and have all the water shed off to both sides. By creating a flat road like this, what happens is the water stays in the middle of the road. And when a car drives over that water, the water will splash out. And every time the water splashes out of the road, it takes the fines with it. So every time it splashes, the fines go and less material creates a deeper hole. And then it just create, just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. So this is good for now, but the best way to do it is if I top dressed it the right way. I just don't have that material to do it and it's not my road to do it with. I just thought I'd point that out to you. And that's now the end of the video. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being a part of the journey, you guys. That's all I got on this one. Catch you on another one.